One of the highlights of the holiday season uh, has been the release of the Amazon Prime documentary put together by NFL Films. And we had the producer, uh, Kenny Rogers, on uh, last week. Bye Bye Barry. And from what I've been able to, you know, get ascertained from people who've seen it, they really like it. There was nothing really yeah. absolutely that new that anybody didn't, didn't know. know. Just but, repackaged. Yeah, exactly. And anytime you get to see great runs and you get to see, I guess, a cameo shot of me oh, with, yeah. with no gray hair is kind of interesting. The young Mike Yes, Stone. and you hear from uh, Jamie Samuelson as well, which is kind of cool. Um, but there is one person who did not like it. Not a good review? No, not a good review. And uh, that person was uh, Scott Mitchell, the former Lions quarterback, the architect of the uh, Great Lakes offense, they called it. Anyway, here's what he had to say on a kind of a rant on Facebook. I just watched Bye Bye Barry on Amazon Prime. It was not a very pleasant experience. I was Barry's teammate for five years, had front row seat to some of the most amazing plays in NFL history. He will never have an equal as a pure runner in the NFL. I could argue that there were several running backs that were more complete, but I won't. Barry was great. And why did you bring that part up? Anyway, however, I'm so tired of I'm so tired of hearing how I was the reason that Barry Sanders never won a Super Bowl. I'm so tired of hearing how I was not a good quarterback. My only response is, frick you all. Didn't say frick either. That includes Eminem and Jeff Daniels. Oh, I'm sure Eminem and Jeff Daniels are upset that Scott Mitchell basically said a few to them. Yeah. Uh, he also talked about Wayne Fonts. And he said that Scott Mitchell said it was difficult to hear his lack of support for him. Quote, I can't even begin to tell you what a disappointment it is to hear my own coach, Wayne Fonts, who went out in free agency and actively pursued me to the point of begging me to come to Detroit. You, I heard him say that he wanted Joe Montana or Warren Moon, and that the only thing that was missing from the team winning the Super Bowl was a quarterback. A little support from the coach might have gone a long way. Wayne never had my back. Now, in fairness to Mitchell, Wayne did say all that stuff when Scott was here, you know, I just don't have a quarterback, a great quarterback. Uh, look, he he was okay here. I mean, he had that one great year in 95, yeah. threw for forty three over 4,300 yards, 32 touchdowns. Uh, the Lions were 10-6, and six, and then they lost. The playoffs got blown out in Philly where he, like the rest of the team, but didn't he, play very well. he didn't play very well. And then he suffered a rib injury. They were 5-11 and 11 the following year. And Mitchell says, quote, bottom line, Barry Sanders had everything in Detroit. Everyone loved him. Everything was built for Barry to succeed. In his 10-year career, he won one playoff game, and the only reason he didn't win more was everyone else was the problem. How many yards did Barry have in the playoffs? In 94, 95, 97. I'll give you a hint. Not very many. We are all to blame for not winning a Super Bowl in Detroit. Even Barry Sanders. I will believe until I die that had we been given more time and patience with the offense, we had and the talent we had, we could have made a deep run in the playoffs and competed to win a Super Bowl. Uh, he was 27 and 30 as a quarterback with the Lions and was, what, 0 and 2 in the playoffs, I believe? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, um, obviously, not a great review. Um, <laughs> his feelings were hurt. Yeah, uh, oh. but it, I mean, to 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 one of his points, it does take fifty three to win a Super Bowl. Yes. you're, you're not going to hang it on one guy. Mm-hmm. But as you mentioned, Wayne Fonts, whether it was at the time, since then, and I think we all believe if there was a better quarterback, yeah, better quarterback play, you had a better chance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of things conspired to take that team down. Look, Scott Mitchell, like I did a show with him on Mondays after Lions games during one or two of the years. And he was he was always a weird guy. I remember like his father was would be at practice all the time. And at he, practice? Yeah. His father would show up at like especially at training camp where people were allowed, but his father was always there in the stands in the makeshift when they just they in a like makeshift field at the Silverdome, actually. Yeah. You know, not even the bubble, but out on the, on the little hill there. And he was just weird. I mean, look, I did a show and I showed you guys this the other day because you didn't, or t- earlier today because you didn't know it. He gave me a very nice holiday gift, a real Lions helmet. Mm-hmm. Uh, autographed by him? Autographed by him. Uh, but his autograph was kind of weird because it says, and I'll just quote exactly because I don't want to be m- misinterpreted. 
to my Jewish buddy, Stoney. Scott Mitchell, 19. <laughs> now who, I mean, I'm sure he was trying to be funny or whatever, but it's still, who would write that on a, an autograph, on a helmet? On a real helmet? It wasn't a replica helmet. It was a real deal. I mean, it is. Yeah. You put it on? Oh, yeah. I've put it on. It's tough to get. <laughs> Putting on a helmet, especially those back there, I'm sure they're easier a little now. His head was probably, his head was bigger than mine. Anyway, I had a hard time getting it on. Anyway. <laughs> the measure? <laughs> yeah. It's not like Jamie's head. Wouldn't. Jamie would have never fit it. But, but uh, um, yeah, it's just it seems weird. a little awkward yes. to sign it that way. I mean, maybe, did he have another buddy named Stoney that wasn't Jewish? Wasn't Jewish? I don't know. He might have. I don't know. I, I have no idea. Stoney Case. <laughs> Former line quarterback. He was after Scott. I Look, I don't know. He's always been weird. And what else also is strange that I found, we found out yesterday, uh, Barry was doing the uh, national media tour. I know he did McAfee and he did yeah. Dan Patrick. Uh, he told Dan Patrick that Joe Montana called him and inquired about being a Detroit called Lion. Called Wayne Fonts. Yes. And that's uh, the Detroit Lions up until maybe Brad Holmes. So I think... Uh, you know, Mitchell didn't help matters. He he was good at times. I don't think he was all that great of a teammate. Like you said, he was just a different dude. Well, that argument, I mean, remember with Lomas, Porsche and all that kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, and Lomas admitted to not blocking for him for one play. There was certainly some some dynamics going Correct. on there. Yeah, you know, I, I do think the one thing he was accurate on, especially is Barry's negative one yeah. playoff game. You know, the, In the ice of Lambeau Field. Barry, I always thought, got off a little free on that mm -hmm. for there was excu other excuses and stuff. And the reality is, I mean, if you're a superstar, you don't put up minus one. I don't care what else is going on. If he was just 30 yards better, they may have won that game. I know. That was you know, crazy. So Dave bad, Craig, the quarterback. Everybody has bad games, too. Yeah. You know, I mean, but, 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 but God, he comes off his butt hurt on this. But, I know. But if you put Montana on that, that, not, that Lions team, I think they would have been really good. But that window of the NFL – you're telling me you would have still taken down the Cowboys and then the nine, 94 Niners, that's when it would have started. Yeah, yeah, but at 95 when they went to Philly, I mean, with Joe Montana, they might have won that game and then who knows what would have happened. Niners and Cowboys were still, they went to the NFC Championship game again, both those teams. And I know. The, you know, maybe, maybe, you could, maybe you could have beat the Barry Switzer Cowboys. Yeah. With Joe Montana? Yeah. I mean, said Scott Mitchell, among other players on that team, played horrible getting blown out, the one Lomas guaranteed the win. I mean, Mitchell threw like interceptions early. I mean, it was just yeah. really, really but That bad. was really a glory period in the NFL, which the teams were just loaded mm -hmm. still because the free agency hadn't completely clicked in for years yet, and it started, that's why things started to change in the late 90s. But you had, I mean, listen to these combos. Jimmy Johnson and Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin. Yeah. Troy Aikman, you know, you and then and that offensive line. These are Hall of Famers, big time Hall of Famers. Yeah. Steve Young, Jerry Rice, Charles Haley's, Deion Sanders, uh, you know, the, the Packers with with Favre and Holmgren. That team, that '96 team, Reggie White. Yeah, that team was loaded, and then the the Elway Broncos. Yeah, I mean, even I the, mean, even the Bills, the Shanahan, even and the Bills were good back in the early part of the '90s. Yeah, well, I saw somebody lost, make a. To four straight Super Bowls. Somebody said this is if the Lions had Montana and were in the AFC, maybe. 